the crowd. Mm -hmm. Roll. Commissioner Vanella. Here. Commissioner Hightower. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Goss. Here. And Mayor Butler. Here. Uh, let's see. Minutes of a special meeting of April the 19th. Any public hearing? Any addition or correction? Not, they'll be approved. Minutes of the regular meeting of April the 24th. Any addition or correction? Boy, you guys were busy. <laughs> Six pages. Really? My goodness, if not, uh, they will be approved. And uh, let's see, uh, Josh, you want to come forth? The, uh, the Civic Center, when it was originally constructed, um, was built with a yellow pine floor for the stage, um, which I believe that, that selection of specific wood was due to budgetary restraint um, in the construction process. Um, because yellow pine, uh, which has become incredibly evident over the past 10 years of myself being there, is far too soft for a stage floor, um, which has uh, resulted in great degradation of the stage floor itself. Um, there are chunks that are pulled up out of the floor and places where boards are separating all over the floor. Um, However, luckily, we have had a very generous donation from Alan and Wanda McCabe. They have donated $50,000 uh, this past December with a pledge to donate another $50,000 during this calendar year, um, which will afford us the ability to replace that stage floor with an oak hardwood plank floor. Um, it'll be painted black. It'll look just the same. However, it will be much more durable. Um, We've put out four bids, and the um, most suitable bid that has come back is from Zeller Construction um, for a total of $57,860 to um, do demolition on the existing floor, replace all of the sleepers, the moisture barrier, and relay a new floor fully sanded and prepped and ready for my staff to paint it with our special stage paint whenever it is finished. I know that that floor has been a, a headache uh, almost uh, since the beginning. Now you're going to place, uh, replace it with the hardwood. Is yes. it going to be hickory? Or it will be oak. Oak. It will be a four inch wide oak plank. Good. How thick? Uh, one inch thick. It will be laid over a, um, there are two by four sleepers underneath oh. that have a one inch um, rubber uh, pad every foot to create a, a natural spring to the floor so that, so that it is more uh, suitable and beneficial for dancers for their joints. And it, you have a 20,000, one that's $20,000 less as far as bids. Are there any specific concerns you have about that? Because that's quite a disparity. There, there are. Um, one, they didn't spec, we, we spec'd out specific four inch tongue and groove mm -hmm. um, plank and they get, came back with a five inch plank that was a grade two lumber. The grade two lumber would result in the possibility of having knots and flaws and imperfections throughout the, the boards. With that, it would allow for, say, a heavy platform or a heavy piece of scenery rolled across it for a board to split so it can add on that it. flaw. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that, that lower bid with that spec um, it, one, it didn't meet our specs, the specs that we put out for the bid, uh, because they went with a wider plank and a grade two lumber. Oh, you're you're not you recommending say, that? No, not at all. Did you say you, you specified a one inch by four inch board? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, well, on, on Zeller's. And, and that is the. No, a one by four is not a one by four. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And so this is. A two is, by four is not a two by four. Exactly, and they gave the. Uh, real life dimension on their spec okay. versus All right. All right. versus the commonplace name of the yes. of the dimension. All right. Okay. Having had uh, all that information, what's your pleasure? 
Be my motion to accept the bid of uh, Zeller Construction for fifty-seven thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. I'll second. Call the roll. Commissioner Ranella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, next, I think we need to have uh, our legal eagle come forth with respect to the uh, new, well, I don't care, uh, uh, city attorney, uh, police chief, fire chief. Well, I have the chief, both chiefs here this evening. He, he's the one man I'm confident has knowledge about what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from Steve, of course. <laughs> but it was my understanding that he interceded in some affair here recently that uh, the YouTube gave him credit for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have before you the new proposed rules and regulations for the Police and Fire Merit Board uh, rules. I can tell you that uh, these really had not been replaced for 17 years, uh, and they were somewhat antiquated. Um, minimally, they need to be looked over. And since that time, uh, the Illinois legislature passed new legislation dealing with fire departments. And I took a look at the etiology of that to determine why the fire departments and not the police department. Uh, and uh, the Illinois Fire Chiefs Association determined that they wanted a new law in Illinois. Uh, and so they pushed the legislation and that's what happened. Um, I worked very closely with Don and Jerry. I want to tell you I was uh, very pleased and uh, I guess not surprised since I already knew them about the professionalism that they gave me as I worked on, on these regs and rules with them. Met with your merit board, your merit board was exceptionally good. I'm presuming that you have read these. Um, there are some differences now uh, from the way it was treated before. I can tell you that the new uh, regulations dealing with the fire fighters uh, complies exactly with the Illinois statute as written. Uh, so with that, if you don't have questions, it's my recommendation you approve it. If you have questions, I have, of course, both Don and Joey here with me. I met with uh, John uh, and the two chiefs this afternoon. Uh, I guess it was sometime today. And I had uh, a few questions uh, which uh, were, were answered uh, very well and th any uh, doubt that I had was uh, cleared up. So uh, I'm in a position to recommend that this new rule and regulation be adopted. Yeah, I'd like to add, I got to sit in on some of the merit board meetings where John and the, both the chiefs were there Good. and it was really a, uh, I appreciate John and all his efforts and, Thank you. and the chiefs and, and the merit board as well. So yeah. uh, it took a lot of work to get this uh, together. So we appreciate that. And with that, I make a motion to uh, adopt the rules and regulations of the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, the City of Marion. Second. Got a motion made and a second. Call the roll. Commissioner Vanella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. It's good to be back in the city of Marion. I have a special love for this place. Thank you. John, we really appreciate your good effort. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Steve, council approval of Treasurer's sworn statement of the police pension fund. Now this is just something we're required to do every year. It basically does nothing more than just uh, to say that at the beginning of the year, the city did not hold any of the funds for which the uh, which should be in the possession of the police pension department. I'm, I'm sorry, of the police pension. 
then it, then it just shows in, then just gives a uh, analysis of the property tax received, employee contributions received, uh, the interest on the property tax that we get from the county, and then it shows that, that all that money then was dispersed out to the police pension. So, there, so then at the end of the year, that means that the city had paid everything over to the police pension. And that's all it is. There's nothing more than that. Uh, what, what's the condition of the police pension fund now? Is it solvent? Solvent. <laughs> okay. I don't think you need the word solvent. I mean, it's... Well, I, I mean, I'm talking about for the annual, not, not, not yeah, the overall. I, I haven't done all of that, all of the work, but I think we're going, to, uh, we're going to have a good rate of return. I think it's going to look good because of the, the, the way the markets have been. Yeah. And, and the one thing that has helped the police pension and now the FAR2 is now they both have exceeded the $10 million mark, so therefore then they will be able to... They have more flexibility in what they can invest in, yes. which will help them out in the long run, too. And we uh, always follow the actuary to a T, right? I mean, that's the recommendation we take. That's what we've been doing, yes. Yeah. And I, but like I said, I, I think the, as far as the receipts go this year uh, and, and, and how it's going to pan out, I think, yeah. I think we had a very good year. Very good. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I suppose we need a motion to approve the... I'd like that motion. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay. Sewer Department uh, contract with Rico Manufacturing. What's what's this all about? And basically, we have uh, 17 pump stations that we want to renew the contracts for. They're like our eyes and ears in case uh, there's a malfunction in any of the pumps. They'll, you know, if there's you know, any issues, they'll tell us right away, and it's, you know, for $10,200 just to renew the contract. That'd be my recommendation. I'll second that. Call roll. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay. Mm, Jim, announcement, please, Fire Merit Board the appointment of Matt Randolph to position as sergeant per the FOP contract. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Merit Board recently went through testing, and uh, uh, I'd like to present uh, for approval uh, Matt Randolph to position of sergeant as per the FOP contract. What, did you have anything to add to that, Don? No, sir. Okay. Need a second. No. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Ranella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Uh, yay. Okay. What about the radio contract, Jim? Yeah. Uh, Don may want to come talk about that, but we've got uh, a budget of item to purchase 40 new mobile radios and 40 new portable radios. And with that, I'll give it over to mm. Don. Yeah. Uh, we did put that in the budget for this year. Uh, we're currently on an 800 megahertz system. We've been on it for some years. And... What it did was it cut, cut us off from all the agencies around us. So we have mute, no communication with agencies around us. Uh, so when something happens, no one else knows. Whereas used to, you, you know, everybody was on the same channel. Everybody could hear us. Something happened. We always had county officers. We always had state officers here to help because, because, they, had, because they could hear us. Um, this would put us back onto that old, uh, to the VHF, uh, uh, VHF slash digital system. So we would go back to that old high band channel. We would also be able to use some digital channels for security for such thing as our ERT team, uh, the narcotics unit, and, and those can't be uh, uh, listened to by the general public. But the regular high band, we would be able to communicate with the other agencies around us, which is important in case of something like the flood we had a couple weeks ago, or, or, or we had a robbery last week. The only way, we had some state police officers following us through town just because they saw our cars with their lights on. You know, if we go back to something like this, they can monitor us, and, and uh, I just think it's very important to go back to that system so we, can, so we can communicate with the other agencies. So these radios are enhanced to the point where, you know, the dead spots like Walmart and places like that, they'll be able to hear a little, a little better? Yeah, the digital system is actually a much better system. Um, right now, we would use the VHF side because because 
the other agencies around us don't have digital, but we would still have good reception. And the reason for the two bids is one is just for the radios, and one is for the Novacom work for repeaters and, and cables, such as that. Uh, who will install them? Novacom. Okay. It seems to me it's nice if uh, we can communicate with other agencies. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's always been kind of a. Yeah. A real spot for us. And like I said, right. yeah, I remember when I first started, we had a closer relationship with the agencies around us because, like I said, they heard what was going on. They would show up on our calls. Uh, you know, we, d we just kind of alienated ourselves, and we don't have that, that tight network. And like I said, if something happens, you know, some of, this, some of the big events will work. Uh, if we're all on the same type of radio system, we can put their channels in our radios and we can communicate. It's good two ways. It's good for us and it's good for the yes. other units. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And we have the license for those already? Yes. Okay. Okay, Jim? Yes, I'd make a motion to uh, purchase the radios. Second. 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 She's Call the room. Commission Commissioner Vanella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, what's this about the Goddard Chapel? Okay, I'm asking council approval to pay, issue a check for $10,000, which is half the uh, cost uh, for the new doors for the uh, uh, chapel. Uh, the, we've got a proposal from True Craft, True Craft this misprint on your uh, agenda here. It's True Craft doors and woodworks. They're the ones that did the, the other doors that we've had out there. Okay, now the, these doors are on the back side or the east side? Yeah, they're on the east side, and it also includes the portico. If you've looked up on the portico, it's all plywood, and that'll be re replaced oh, also. Okay. So I made my motion to approve that. This this same company did the front doors, right? Yes, same yes. company. Okay. I'll second that. Second call roll. Commissioner Vanella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, Chris. Council, Mayor, um, with our summer season arriving and uh, quite a quite a busy period of time at the hub, we've got some um, uh, approval recommendations for hire. Um, and there's uh, the six that you see right there. They include uh, Lexi Blevins for membership attendant at nine dollars an hour, as well as cafe at nine dollars an hour. Uh, Sophia Spence and mem for membership attendant at $9 an hour, cafe at $9 an hour, and child watch at $8.25 an hour. Uh, third one, Nicole Plumley for camp counselor at $8.50 an hour. Uh, fourth, Emily Rubright for child watch at $8.25 an hour, and camp counselor at $8.50 an hour. And then Shelly Biddle for part-time group exercise instructor at $15 an hour. Um, and finally in this list, uh, David Creer, part-time maintenance at 8.50 an hour. What's your pleasure? I move that we approve the aforementioned personnel at the stated salary and positions. Second. Call roll. Mr. Manella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay. Okay. And then we have um, uh, requested approval for additional job classifications with um, current part-time employees. The first one, uh, Jen Rodriguez, who is um, currently group exercise instructor, uh, just recently got her at the end of this uh, of April got her personal trainer certification. So we're adding our second um, personal trainer. Uh, we had two previously that one uh, resigned and left the area. So we're um, adding her, hopefully, as personal trainer, job classification at $30 an hour. Is that what the others were? Yeah, the same, same amount for that part-time position. How many hours a week will she be putting in? Um, we hope quite a few. Um, there's a demand for it, but we would think probably between initially and building, initially probably five to, to 10 hours a week. Um, and that would be uh, comparable for, or that would uh, match up with her part-time group exercise okay. um, for uh, maintaining part-time um, level. Now the people she's working with, are, are they paying a fee of some? Yes, they pay a fee. Um, and so that's about a 50% um, 
um, um, level in terms of pay for the personal trainer of what we would actually get in revenue from, from those from those clients. So they do private instruction forms. Um, we connect them, and they um, and they pay for packages and um, uh, for personal training. Okay, so uh, so it's sixty dollars an hour is what that that rate is. The, so the rate is what sixty dollars an hour and, and thirty for thirty minutes. Wow. And what does a personal trainer do? Well, they, they work with a person based on what their goals and what their limitations may be to help them um, uh, reach a higher level of, of, of um, conditioning, higher level of performance in life, and, and, uh, and work with them to design and, and um, motivate them for their exercise programs. <clears throat> uh, if I paid my fee, could she teach me to jump high jump six feet? Uh, we can work on it. Uh, we want to set those goals. And <laughs> yeah. You'll be a good politician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? Um, and then the other job classification addition is um, Melissa Oakley, for, um, who's currently group exercise instructor as well. And, um, and that's for part-time swim instructor um, to assist with lessons in general, particularly in the competitive, competitive swim lesson um, area. And that's at at twenty dollars an hour for that. Uh, okay, position. what's your pleasure? Be my motion to approve uh, Jen Rodriguez and Lisa Oakley at the above mentioned uh, rate of pay. I'll say, call the roll. Commissioner Manella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Mr. Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. Okay, thank Yay. you. Appreciate it very much. Chris. That's the list. Thank you. Okay. Lighthouse Shelter. Need that for executive session? Yeah, because we do have several things that are yes. rather sensitive. Okay. Uh, Ten-year loan for sewer project. What's that Actually, about? Yeah. Well, we basically went out for bids in order to pay for the Rolling Hills subdivision, uh, a sewer extension, and then it may, it may, it may have some money used on, in, in, in conjunction too with the, some renovations going down at the, uh, at, uh, at the sewer plant itself. Uh, I sent out for bids. Uh, I requested a bid for a monthly payment for a 10-year fixed rate. I got uh, two bids back, and one of them only truly met the requirements. The first one was from the uh, Banterra Bank <clears throat> at 2.45% uh, fixed, but it is a five-year five commercial balloon amortized over 10 years. The next one was from uh, First Southern Bank, which is a 10-year fixed rate at 2.94%. 2.94%. Yes. yes. Who was that from? Uh, First Southern. And what, uh, what was the rate for Banterra? It was uh, 2.45. It would be approximately, over the first five years, you would save $14,000 with Banterra, but then you'd have to take out another loan, you know, in order to pay off the balloon. And, you, and, and who knows what the interest rates are going to be five years from now. So after 10 years, what's the net on either? Huh? Oh, after 10 years, I mean, who, who pays more? Well, we don't know, see, because Banterra, you'd have a balloon payment, which means then you'd have to take out another loan to pay off the remaining. Pay off the uh, balloon. Yeah, to pay off the balloon. So the unknown factor is. Yeah, so you have the unknown factor. You yeah, even that. though you might save 14000 in the first five years, you have that un unknown factor. So what are you recommending then? Oh, I'm recommending for Southern because we, yeah. we're locked in. We know what it's yeah, going to be. Know, you know what you're locked getting. Exactly right. We know what we're getting. Yeah. I'll make that motion. I'll you got a motion it. made? I'll second. Second call rule. Commissioner Manella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay. We, you want to do nine in executive session, too? Just, or, actually, I mean, actually, there, there's nothing to discuss right now. Uh, uh, 
the, oh, on the transfer, the, the transfer station. station, the contracts up, and uh, there have been several uh, uh, individuals and firms that have expressed interest in in uh, the operation of the transfer station. So, uh, uh, I, I, I would uh, like to give uh, Gail permission to put that out for uh, yes. for bid. Yes. Actually, that's what I was going to say. Is once the council has a direction, we can proceed. Yeah. Okay. That's if that's motion. the council. Yeah, that's my second. motion. Got a second. Call the roll. Gladly. Commissioner Vanella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Very good. Okay. Item 10 has been withdrawn. Uh, now we. Have need to consider the uh, transfer of Beverly Daniel uh, from the water department to the senior citizens as assistant director. Uh, and this it's, it's administrative assistant. Okay, administ yeah. administrative assistant, yes, but uh, it was just a uh, correct phenomenon. But but this is a lateral movement. It isn't. Uh, she's not being promoted. She's not being demoted. Same pay too. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the yes. same union. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I put on the council's desks, um, we, we did a form because uh, upon conferring with the mayor and Anthony Manella, uh, commissioner that had the, had the employee, commissioner receiving employee, we did a form, just a transfer form for the treasurer's office. And uh, since it was same position, same pay, I mean, uh, lateral transfer, same union, same pay, uh, everybody was accepting. We uh, didn't bring it to the council when we first talked about it. So I uh, did uh, attach that sheet for you guys to look at so you would know that we had already signed and delivered to Steve's office for the treasurer's office that transfer. Okay, having a uh, motion, motion to approve. No, 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 it's okay, go I'll ahead. I'll second it. All right, motion made, second call the rule. Commissioner Vanella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay, where are we on the city budget? We passed it last meeting. You passed it last time. Yes. I'll have to look at it and see. Too late. Like Nancy Pelosi said, pass it and then we'll read it. So uh, we did. Too we late. Pass it and <laughs> yeah. someday I'll read it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Old business, ordinance 3376 pertaining to the impoundment of vehicles in connection with illegal activities. Uh, did you consider that? We did, and there were some questions about it, and that's why we tabled it for a discussion at this meeting. We now understand that uh, the police chief and our city uh, attorney are in uh, uh, agreement with each other. Uh, there will be a change in this, is that right? Yes. It'll go from the uh, penalties of 200 to 100 now? Yeah, the, the fee was supposed to be changed to $100. $100 flat fee for everything. Well, I understand well, there was now, something now, in there. What are we talking about? $100 for what? Well, the, the administrative fee when our officers are on scene. If, if no, people no, 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 no. I, I appreciate the detail, but uh, we're, we're charging people $100 to get their vehicle back. Is that right? Yes. Very, very yeah. simple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And it has been two hundred. We've never had one. No, the way it was originally written up, the proposed fee was going to be two fifty, but we decided to lower it because we changed some wording in the ordinance. So we've lowered the fee to one hundred dollars. Okay. These are vehicles that's involved with illegal activity. Yes. So yeah, they're just vehicles that are police. only vehicles that are involved oh, in right. illegal activities where, we, where someone is arrested. Does so that fee consistent with what other towns with a similar ordinance has? No, other towns are charging five, six hundred dollars. Told you. <laughs> yeah, and well, just oftentimes you can't go by what other towns do. I mean, I mean we're being just generous as well. <clears throat> it's, it's, one. Like, it's like this: you impound a guy's car, you, we, we keep it overnight. <clears throat> He comes the next day to pick it up. Are you going to charge him five hundred dollars because you kept his car overnight? Oh, yeah, it's a legal activity. Yeah, it's a legal activity. What he did. Yeah. Well, illegal DUI. Anthony. Yeah, uh, well, you, you know, if a town is so hard up for money that they've got to rob people, 
I, I guess that's okay. I'm with you. Well, one of the things I want to clarify is not an administrative fee. It is an administrative fine. There is a difference. There was a class action lawsuit that was filed against several municipalities basically alleging that they couldn't verify the administrative fee as being somehow related to the actual amount of time police officers were involved in the detention of the car or the individual. To get around that uh, and make sure that we're not going to be involved in a class action lawsuit, you can, you can have a penalty associated with that. And so that's why that language is chosen as, a, as opposed to an administrative uh, penalty, uh, I'm sorry, administrative fee. It's a fine. It's, so it's no different than, okay. you know, some of the things that you may pay at the courthouse to help defray costs. It's a civil fine. Yes, sir, it is. Yeah. And another thing, with, with our fine, uh, we're not having the vehicles brought to our police department because we don't have, we don't have room for them there. The vehicles will be towed by our rotations, record services, They'll be towed to their locations and they'll be stored at their locations. And they will charge an impound fee as well. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll charge their regular rates. Whatever. And before it's released, they just pay the administrative fine and we release the car. So this $100 had nothing to do with the tow truck? Correct. This is, they still charge whatever they want. We can't regulate that? You already do. What we, yes, we're, sure. well, I've, I've been involved in some recovery impoundments, and I've been charged different figures. They're not all the same. If well, they're on our rotation, there are certain fees they're allowed to charge. Well, that's just for picking it up. That, that doesn't mean anything about when it gets to the yard. Well, the, the city ordinance... Uh, they, can only, they can only charge so much. The city ordinance, it's the city ordinance tells them how much they can charge for tow and storage. I understand, but once they get impounded behind the fence, then they can do what they want to do. No. No. Well, no. They can do, well, they're not all on the same wavelength. Well, that's up to the chief to make sure that everybody understands yes. they're reading from the same page. So we, well, I, I we, think it depends on what it is, too. Well, right? sure, but... Yeah, if but there are different, yeah, I know our ordinance specifies a daytime rate, nighttime rate, and, and storage. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, yes it you, is. You, you're talking about three different rates, so what, what, what's, uh, do you charge $100 for each one? No, the towing service. I'm oh. talking about just the towing service, not us. Just the towing oh, service. Oh, tow yeah. towing. Okay. Yeah, the towing, the towing ordinance. All right. All right. Good point, Gail. <clears throat> so we have $100 for, uh, for the, just on this ordinance. Then we have a towing charge for whatever it is, and then we have an impoundment recovery charge. That's, that's Once they get in the field, in the That's, in the that's up to the to the, the companies, and uh, the towing companies. I think we, we should be able to control that. Deal. That's, we do. We do. Okay. Well, I, well, I, well, I understand where you're coming from, because... Uh, I've had different fees charged to me. Well, we, we caught one a few years back that uh, uh, took it to their facility and, and the woman wanted to go to a dealership. Yeah. And instead of just taking it straight to the dealership, they took it to their impound exactly yard. Right. And they remember they charged them double and that's right. And, and he got on the phone and said, No. Well that's what I'm referring to. It's yes. it's not any clear cut yeah. plan. Chief here. just one question on there. Uh, on number six it says while driving, while license suspended, et cetera. I mean, if they have a licensed sober driver in a vehicle, are officers allowed to allow the vehicle to leave with them in lieu of it being told? And That's officer discretion. Okay, so it's not mandatory then? No, that would be officer discretion as usual. Yeah. If someone's illegally parking in an area and it's towed, does this $100 fee apply to that? No. Okay. Okay, so what do we need to do? Adopt the hundred dollars? I think we need to amend it. Amend both. Uh, that said two hundred here. I yeah, think. I think it says two hundred. Yeah, this need, one says two hundred. Well, how did it get into two hundred? Okay, we need to amend it. Now. Yeah, I was told that yeah. that I was told that that was typed out wrong. Um, but since you guys brought it up, that that's what we had discussed and agreed on. So so it will have to that will have to be rewritten. We, but it will be re rewritten to show the hundred dollar the one hundred dollar uh, fine. Based as amended to reduce the fee yeah. to a hundred dollars. Right. Yeah, I'll make that my motion then. Okay. Motion made. Second. 
I'll second it. <laughs> Why so slow? Well, I was the one that's, that uh, okay. I was going to make the amendment. <laughs> Call the roll. Well, that's all right. Call the roll. Caller, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Ranella. Hello. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. I thought you were <coughs> discussing it. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Did you have something you, you're you observing? Join the show. Okay. Uh, all right. What do you got? Well, I make a motion to pay the monthly bills as funds become available. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Manella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yay. Uh, Steve or Gail, or either one on our consent agenda, are we okay with Jacob and Klein? Yes. Okay. Yes. I make a motion to pay the consent agenda. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Manella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Goss? Yay. And Mayor Bell? Yeah. That's all. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hightower? No. Nothing? Jim? Yeah, I've got one report here from the fire department. I, I just like to say in the month of April, we had nine fires that we responded to, uh, six uh, rescue calls, uh, seven um, calls that were not fires, just hazardous conditions, 22 service calls. Uh, 23 false alarms and one severe weather call I, and I, on that I'd like to note that uh, you know fire department police department and, and all the city and uh, street department we really worked hard for the storm so us as commissioners I think really appreciate their, their efforts right point well taken yeah. and, and uh, how, how much was the damage from the fire uh, yeah, it's got the estimated fire loss of only 250. So, well, no more than that. It was hardly worth the effort. <laughs> we got them. Got them before they got out. Too bad. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was a rental house. Yeah. You did say that you, you, you did. It was the response time that made it so low. Oh, I see. And, and they did save the chimneys. It did save the chimneys. And the foundation. And the foundation. Nobody's got chimneys anymore. This report does say well, the, last houses. Oh. the last 12 months fire loss has been around 736,000, though, for the last 12 months. That's well, that's about, what, 60,000 a month. That's not bad. Yeah. Gee whiz. That, that would just cover the loss of one moderate-sized house. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, if you, okay. you take that against the assessed valuation of property, I mean, really, it's... You're right, it's not much. No. Okay, anything else, Jim? That's all. All right, John. Nothing, thank you. Hallelujah. I, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking he's going to beat the record. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No way. Well, we've only been in session 35 you, minutes. You're doing exa exceptionally well. Yeah. Of course, we always do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anybody else have anything needs to come before the council? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Are you going to executive session, session for the lighthouse? Oh. Yeah. I can't remember that. Yeah. Okay. We'll hold the motion to adjourn. Need a motion to go into executive session. For discussion of uh, uh, well, property? Uh, it's it's uh, real estate and contracts. What you're saying? Bringing out for dead for insurance company? No, it's uh, lighthouse damages. And the contract. And there's going to be some contract uh, discussion, too. We're setting dead requirements? We're setting. Uh, City contract with uh, remediation and for remediation and repair. Repair. We're going to enter into one. I think they can do that in the executive session. No, we're discussing. All right, we're just going to discuss potential contracts with insurance for remediation of the lighthouse. Is that what we're going to do? Yes. Okay. Okay. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Who makes the motion? Discuss the transfer. Station. No, although the no, sheet is no, taking no, no, okay. no, 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 we, we, we'll get back to we, that we later. Give, well, no, we yeah. give we give Gail permission right. yeah. to 
seek. Uh, we'll do that. Yes. So we need. Oh, okay. Got a motion to go to executive session. I'll Make second. second. Or Call the roll. She's got it. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yay. Okay. Well, that was a 